Hello, it's Fabrizio Ayala. Thanks for tuning in. Today I got Nate Taylor. Hey. And we're going to be doing, well, I'm going to be doing rocks. So, it should be really exciting. Nate, what are you, what are you working on today? I am still unsure. I think I'm going to start working on a Christmas present oh, for a cool. member of my family. They've, they've been on a Griffin kick. For the past several months, it doesn't seem like it's a thing that's going to go away by Christmas, so maybe I'll draw a griffin. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess you don't know when things like that... Uh, you never, yeah, you never know if it's going to be, is this going to be a lifelong obsession or, or what, yeah. Yeah, so I have this shot. nephew that was obsessed with trains, and I think every uh, kid yeah. is, is kind of obsessed with trains, but then they just, they, it gets away from them after a while. Yep. Um... But he was really into it. I'm like, I think he's like almost crossed the age, you know, where it becomes oh, like... Oh, right, where he's permanently fascinated. And right before that, he switched over to like the Titanic and then it's oh, you know, all this other stuff. So That's a left turn. Yeah, so it's kind of funny. Like, um, and I don't know what prompts it. It's it's pretty fascinating to me. That is, um, I grew up with one of my friends growing up in our neighborhood. He was a train... It's, he was a train fanatic for sure, and it sort of made sense. His dad was an engineer on the railroad. Um, oh wow! But up till yeah, up till way later, he I mean he stuck with it for a long time. Up until middle school, he was still uh, actively watching Thomas the Tank Engine, and he had all these like train play sets and stuff hmm. that he would set up. And yeah, he was he was into it. That's pretty fascinating. Yeah, there's a I think there's a when you're a little kid. There's definitely like a power thing that you gravitate towards, whether it's dinosaurs or uh, for me, it was like castles. I think knights in armor and castles, that was like the power thing that I, I liked dinosaurs too, but it was really like medieval stuff that I, I got pulled towards. Yeah. I bounced you around. Like yeah. You bounced yeah around. I bounced around. Oh, Hey, hello, Blake. How's it going? Blake Piles joined us today. Hi, Blake. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a little different than than usual, but hopefully this stuff is interesting as well. Um, but yeah, as far as the kind of stuff that I really got into, <clears throat> um, I guess it depends on the age. But first, it was strictly cartoonist stuff. So I was hmm. we're talking like Beetle Bailey and right. Garfield and stuff like that. And then, but when I like I attribute this one particular day to really solidifying it. Um, in my school, there was like this, like an art day or something where basically the high school kids came over and would show their artwork. Um, mm -hmm. And there was this one dude and he was doing this pen and ink drawing, beautiful pen and ink drawing of a, of a castle. I can't, I don't know, some goblins, monsters, something fantasy. Mm -hmm beautifully done in pen and ink and i'm like that's what i want to do that's awesome yeah. <clears throat> yeah that was it was a very specific moment as soon as i saw that i'm like okay and then i picked up the pen and ink and it was pen and ink for a very long time until you know went to brush and charcoal and all that other yeah. stuff but that's really cool yeah there was certainly um i don't know there, i had an experience sort of similar to that one time i i don't know how old i was um but this, this kid, he must have been, I think he was probably in like late middle school or early high school. I think it was just like a drawing of a muscly dude that he drew for me. But I was like, this is amazing. This is really good. How'd you get to... And it was, it was like a high school. It wasn't anything um, special. But to me, it was, it was this yeah. incredible thing. And it sort of pushed me. Um, it pushed me forward. It gave me something to, gave me something to look, look forward to. Yeah, you do. It's definitely about exposure. I mean, if you're never mm -hmm. exposed to that that thing that like really you, you latch on to, then it just it'll probably just go away at some yep. point in time. Yeah, yeah. I was. Um, yeah, you see, kids kids just naturally draw, and then they just um, yeah, they just quit after a little bit. They're not if they're not um, encouraged or yeah. I guess I guess you stick with whatever it seems like you're good at is a shame i i always tell um whenever i'm interacting with parents of young kids 
I always tell them, like, encourage, encourage the drawing because it's not just if you want to be an artist. It's really handy to have. Yeah. Um, it's just, yeah, another, it's like knowing another language. Um, and it's just another way you can express yourself and think through your problems visually. It's just really, I would still want to be able to draw even if I didn't um, draw creatively. Yeah, I, I totally agree. It's just, a, it's almost like, yeah, like picking up the guitar, even if you're not like a virtuoso on the guitar, right. you can kind of pick it up, play a few songs, and it, it serves a purpose at a particular time. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, let's see, Blake says, pretty good. Marlena and I are working on stuff at the office, and we get a treat, looks like. Yeah, that's, that's cool. So, Nate, I think I told you about uh, Midnight Mausoleum um Blake's involved with that so that's that's been a it's been really great to watch to have something to watch oh yeah you know, you while I'm drawing that yeah it sounded like um it's um I don't know if it's all is it all horror movies it's the um, ones that I've seen yeah I'm all older, sure. older yeah, horror yeah. movies that's awesome yeah. yeah that sounds like a lot of yeah I love that kind of stuff that sounds like a lot of fun it's a very cozy experience too um are, are they doing commentary um not as during, well. but like kind of in between. In between, that is really, yeah. that is really fun. Yeah, yeah and you, you just get exposed to stuff that you wouldn't. Um, mm -hmm. And those breaks just kind of make it, I don't know, they just totally, it's a totally different vibe as opposed yeah. to me just randomly picking some old movie that I would, that would have never picked up. Yeah, absolutely. We, uh, a buddy of mine and I, and I were trying to watch the, the new Disney live action Pinocchio. I'm just making making an effort, and we we got I don't know maybe ten minutes in and just couldn't do it anymore. Wow, ten minutes. That's, that's it was it. it was pretty good. Yeah, I don't know. It was it was at the point where the fairy couldn't just come through the window. She had to shoot like a, a ray of blue magic at a mirror, and it had to reflect off the mirror and onto the face of a cuckoo clock. Like it had to be this big. Um, production and then I, I don't know tapping out at that point it can't just be a blue fairy that comes in there's a one um but yeah we instead we ended up watching the old superman cartoons from the 40s and so today yeah i'm doing rocks and you said that you love doing rocks which is interesting because I do, yeah I've never really had the occasion or the need to draw a bunch of rocks, little rocks, you know, maybe yeah. debris or something like that. Right. But this is the first time I've really had to do caves and like rock formations and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's been, it's, it's been very edifying for sure. Um, hmm. But I think the biggest thing for me was, and I think you mentioned it too, it is volume, but in I approached it before, basically. I was taking, like, the rocks I would do for debris and just kind of putting them on each other, which totally does not work. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. To do right. a cave. Like, a cave has its own, like, yeah. structure and all that yep. kind of stuff. So once I kind of realized that, I'm like, okay. I think I was just – it was like one rock to, the, to rule them all instead of, you know mm. – uh, specific kinds of rocks for specific things. I see. Yeah, that is tough. So, what it was? What did? It, um, what sort of solutions did you end up coming up with? I mean, I've just been I've been looking at photographs all and just doing studies. So I haven't even really referenced comic book rocks because um, I'm like I'm I'm essentially coming up with my own comic book rocks. I see. Um, yeah. I didn't want to use anybody else's shorthand even though I mean, sometimes that stuff is it's useful because you know they do the work for you i'm like oh that that shorthand works but mm -hmm. i have to do so many rocks that i just didn't think using somebody else's shorthand it I, it wouldn't be enough to get me through the whole thing right yeah and uh i feel like it's always a watering down sort of yeah. a thing versus something from something that you've observed that's cool so what sort of are you looking at mostly sedimentary well what's what is most of the rock in a cave um what type of rock is that 
Well, that's the thing. Like all of the photos that I've been seeing, it's all kinds of rock. So okay. it, I couldn't even just kind of like pick a particular kind. Mm -hmm. um, I think I have in my head the kind of rocks I'm going to use or the kind of, you know, uh, the kind of cave formations. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. But I've been trying to hit them all. So, okay. Just coming up with a vocabulary. So, you know, I might reach a point where I'm like, I don't know how to work my way out of this particular part, mm -hmm. you know, so I'll use this other kind of rock formation or whatever. Um, have you uh, been in caves? Have you gone caving? Mm, a little bit years ago I did, but gotcha. not like, not extensively. We're yeah. to, to the point where I know anything about rocks. That's for yeah. sure. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah I've, I've not done much at all either. Right? But it's definitely, a, at least atmospherically, it's a really wild, yeah, really wild thing. Something I always loved about it was coming back up. Because um, the cave sort of becomes your world. And when you come back up, it's like there are these alien structures, like trees. Um, there's like a sky above you. It's just a weird, yeah. a weird thing. I'm definitely going to approach it, you know, with a lot of, like, uh, essentially pick one side. Mm -hmm. One side, and... one side how? of the rock and essentially just sh uh, yeah. put that in shadow in black mm -hmm. to like really it, it fits with obviously my style and everything um so i'm not going to do a lot of like subtle texture across the whole thing i'm really just gonna drive home the light uh, the light source yeah and then just to do a little bit of detail into the light and that's it do you have a lot of action happening on this cave? Is that what sort of drives the need to keep it simple? Yeah, there's, I mean, there's a lot of highly detailed stuff. Okay. You know, the characters are really detailed. So I don't, I need them to look like they have weight. I need the, them to look like they fit in the scene, but they really shouldn't be competing, I think, with like these monsters that I drew. And right. So that's, at least that's, that's my goal. Yeah, that makes sense. Is it a, because uh, there's so many different, oops, there's so many different kinds of, or like moods of caves. Is this like a drippy, wet? Is this like a sandy, uh, dry sort of? Yeah, it's not drippy and wet. I came across a lot of those in my. That's, I feel like that's the good, that's the standard. Yeah. Um, it's not, yeah, it's definitely not a drippy. So there's not a lot of those like, piled up like formations that that happen gotcha. um but i may use a little bit of that i don't know that makes sense yeah so I've, i spent almost an entire week just doing rocks are you um thoroughly ready to get away from it or is it kind of become like i kind of like doing has it sort of become something that you love for more or more comfortable with uh no I, I yeah i'm actually enjoying it i actually think okay. that it's really become like a, a sort of a another fundamental thing that i can do that mm -hmm. i shied away from or didn't have that skill set so that's that's always nice like i think I, I understand it enough where i can implement it when i need to you know mm -hmm. so that's pretty cool that makes me you know just more confident when I have to do stuff. Great. I like think that's something. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, like, th the one other th thing that I know that I need to work on is trees. Like, mm -hmm. that's that's my other, like, nemesis when it comes to this kind of stuff. Yeah. I need to be uh, more cautious because when we when you, you say you're struggling with something, I'm like, oh, I love drawing. I love drawing clouds or I love drawing trees. But then you, I see your studies of rocks and it's, like, very... Um, you're you're going deep whereas i'm just like <laughs> casually oh rocks they're like uh, squares they're like cubes and i just i just i just my rocks are just cubes with one corner sawn off i mean just and truncated cubes <laughs> there's not there's anything wrong with that no. um yeah but it's not like oh i love drawing you know it's not um we're not drawing the it's not really the same 
It's not yeah, like, for- I'm like, oh, it comes easily to me, but it's not actually, it's a completely different thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we de- we definitely have different styles, and you know, depending on what the story needs to do, that's its own thing. Right, right, totally. Yeah. This is true. Oh, cool. So it looks like Blake's doing some more Alterna ads. Yeah, um, they purchased some ad an ad for uh, Horus, which is really cool. And I think I mentioned to the you, oh yeah, to you as well. That. Yeah, that is awesome. It's really. F- it's it's great whenever like you you like like the ads in the sure. in the book that's really it's a nice surprise because you just, you don't know who's gonna buy ads so that's really cool wow, that is neat. it's gonna be fun what are some favorites um what are some favorite movies that you've seen from there what's oh, what's geez. the name again midnight mausoleum midnight mausoleum what are some favorites that you've seen from Midnight Mausoleum? Oh, geez, the one that I just watched was, is it called the Castle of Blood? I'm like going to totally blanking <laughs> on this. It wasn't Castle Terror, was it? Or No. Okay. Or Freak, Castle Freak, that's the one I'm thinking of. The swore it was, yeah, the Castle of Blood, okay. which I really, really liked a lot. Gotcha. Yeah, I thought that was great. I think they said it was shot in something like 14 days or something. Something oh, wow. crazy. That's, a, that's great. Which you, is, can't, you can't lose with those. I mean, it's just incredible to me. Um, yeah. You know, they take years to do stuff today. And I'm like, yeah, that was not, mm-hmm. not really worth the time and effort that you guys put in there. Yeah. Yeah. When you see it. Yeah. Yeah. And certainly something to be said for cranking stuff out really quickly. Well, yeah, you you know you're not overthinking things. You're just you're just moving forward. Mm-hmm. Um, and some of that, I mean, admittedly, comes down to your sort of like intuitive sense of stuff. And right. And, and if you can't do it, you can't do it. But right. I always think of Peter Jackson and uh, The Hobbit, how he was literally writing, you know, as they're building the sets. Right. I'm like, who else could have done that and have any coherent story? I don't know. Yeah, because the the amount of coherence he got um, for, yeah, is impressive. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, that is pretty impressive. Oh, Oh, yeah. So I was was, uh, mentioning about doing... Um, Bernie Wrightson's yeah, Frankenstein right, stuff. Right, right, right. We're talking about that. Yeah. yeah, that. Yeah, what all? And you mentioned you wanted to put some time studying um, before you tackle that, so you don't end up starting something, realize you don't have the chops built up to do. I don't know. I could see a lot of fabric <laughs> studies going into that. For sure. Yeah, we have fabric. Um, yeah. Yeah, textures. Mm-hmm. Um, There's something about Dickens stories that are intensely textural. Just the way he describes a room, um, it's very, very, it's, yeah, full of um, depth, full of a lot of, I feel like these really heavily varnished wood textures, mm-hmm. this like ornate, these big draperies and things. That's just my impression of it, but. Yeah, for sure. I, I mean, I think step one is really f- roughing out at least the drawings I want to do, knowing that they full well might change. But then that gives me a list of essentially a task list of studies to do. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the locations, the grave, things like that. Um, right. Yeah. But yeah, I think you know, if I give myself enough lead time, so if I do like. You know, maybe this year I start laying stuff out, start doing studies, and then maybe start actually working on them next year. I think that's it'll give me enough time. That's awesome. If you put that into how many illustrations you would do total for that? Yeah, that's a good question. I was going to break out my Frankenstein book. Right. Um, right. I didn't get a chance to, though. I can't remember how many. 
not that I need to do the exact number, but it, it for Frankenstein, it really felt like it was a good number of illustrations as opposed right. to just like three illustrations for a book that really, yeah. you know. Yeah, that would be a cheap, that'd be kind of a, a sellout sort of a thing. Yeah. Yeah, that, that'd be awesome. I'd love to own, I'd love to own a copy of, um, a Christmas Carol with your illustrations. It would be incredible. Especially knowing how much you like that, how much you care about that story. Um, that would make it nice. Yeah. Um, Speaking of doing um, studies for things, I did a did a series of illustrations for Paradise Lost. Um, oh, wow! Back in yeah, it was like one of the one of my summers off from college. Um, I don't know. I think I was just really fascinated by the story at the time, and it was I I'm actually more proud of the abridgment um, work I did on that than the actual illust the illustrations are fine for. Um, a college kid, but I would love to go back use my use my abridgment because I really think I did a pretty good job sort of adapting it for a more modern audience. Um, and I would love and I would but I would have to do figure studies. I would have to do um, months months worth of figure studies because that yeah. would be, yeah that's like every every scene. Um, but it's something I've. I wanted to do sort of similar to your Christmas Carol project. I think those old books just are, should be endless sources of this kind of stuff. I, yeah. I don't know. I'm surprised it doesn't happen more often. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I don't know why everybody wouldn't at least attempt to, to pick an old book they love. It doesn't have to be forced on them. You know? mm -hmm. Right. Just find, you know, I don't know the inferno some some old book that has really visually interesting things and mm -hmm. do your crack at it yeah yeah i would also love to see that i feel like there are there are more books that i'd like to do that with than there are is time to do them yeah um, especially doing i mean how do you so you're are you you're gonna balance this with the horus stuff that's a i feel like that's a, that's the tough question is like okay well i'm also making i'm telling my own stories how do i balance that yeah it's gonna be on the side really just like a a fun thing that i kind of noodle on really gotcha. yeah um yeah i won't chip away at it because i'm not doing pen and ink for horse it's all brush so right. you know it'll it'll it's like a mindset yeah shift when i you know go into that so i It'll be it'll be nice as opposed to now when I take a break and I don't know do something that's not necessarily productive. It's just you know to get me away from the desk for a little bit. Now I can just hatch for thirty minutes on yeah uh, something. There's no project more appropriate for a a lot of cross hatching. I don't think exactly than that project. Yeah, you'd be fully. Yeah, and I a few years ago I found this drawing that I did. I think I might have showed it to you. It's like that fantasy one where they're, the zombies are coming out of the snow. Oh, I did yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yep. I did it when I was like 15. I, I kept looking at it. And I'm like, damn, that was not to say it was great, but it was a lot of patience, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> where yeah. I don't I don't want to say I've lost that patience, but part of me thinks I kind of have. Mm -hmm. And this was a way to like, well, you know, I'm going to kind of revisit that and see if I can get that back a little bit. Yeah, that makes sense. I found working at a larger format tends to force me into that, back into that space. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if I'm... Yeah. I, I guess it's like a... I feel like there was a trade made at some point of patience for... A little more bravery or courage um courage to do backgrounds courage to mm. do more than one character courage to have things in motion yeah um that i did not have early on in high school courage to do these uh, yeah and i've always really separated comic books from illustration i mean they to me they couldn't be more different um, so, <clears throat> you know, 
I just want to make sure I don't lose the illustration side, which I right. have always enjoyed. It is very different. Um, yeah, it because I've seen comic books that have that illustrators have done. And I think maybe there's like an assumption that there's just an automatic crossover, but there really isn't. And it looks it looks weird to have a comic page that's just a full page of um, little illustrations. It's really not what it's really not what comics are. Yeah, exactly. And, and I can't put my finger on why why it looks so strange. Maybe it's just too detailed. Yeah, I mean there are some artists that do tiny little illustrations, right? And, technically they are really good like top mm -hmm. notch right but uh it doesn't translate it doesn't read as a comic book and yeah you know yeah it becomes not, kind of a weird art object <laughs> yeah kind of i mean i not to say i could do better but I, i'm just recognizing sort of the uh, the format a bit right yeah it's it's whether it's in line it's is it in line with um the format or not i think yeah no no questions of um is it good or is it valid but um yeah does it line up with sort of the standard that, that is that is set i guess yep yeah so the thing about rocks that I, I have been or at least and again i mean caves not necessarily rocks you know um debris or whatever is whenever you're looking at a well-lit cave, you know, if if you brought that into like Photoshop and just turned it into a black and white image, the coloration differences and read as sometimes plane shifts and changes. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a weird thing. Like yeah. it's not it, it, right. Yeah, it's just it's just such a unique thing. Yeah, I don't know how you would go about lighting a cave well. Something about most of the surfaces being conca concave, no pun intended. Um, yeah, that's difficult. Yeah, see, it's it's diff a, yeah, it's difficult to parse. Like you, you need to force like shapes and lighting. If not, it'll just be a, a giant half sphere or right. you know something like that. Yeah. That's a unique challenge. Another reason I'm excited to see these caves that you've been, um, been working on. Actually, let me grab a page and I'll I'll dissect yeah. how poorly I've done in the past. No, yeah, let's see it though. Thanks, Blake. Appreciate it. Blake said, uh, I don't know if you're back yet, Fabrizio. I am back. Yep. Oh, Blake said, both drawings are looking good, guys. It's oh, very awesome. kind of you. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate that. You may change your mind when I open up this one. <laughs> um, Blake, I'll have to check out. Um, I've got some free, free time today. I'm going to check out Midnight Mausoleum later watch some of that stuff so this is the cover of issue three that i inked a while ago before my rock oh that's, yeah this is it so okay. like if you look at these rocks yeah i'm having a little trouble seeing them i don't know if you can get any closer without oh, really? going out of focus they're a little oh there we go yeah that's better um down a little maybe are they, okay, now I see them. Great, thank you. And it was just, it was too arbitrary. And I um, see. Them. Like, yeah, it looks like I tried to stack like rubble rocks mm -hmm. to make, to make the whole side, you mm. know? Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes it works and sometimes it, do, it doesn't. And I think right. that's where I'm like, yeah, it kind of works, it kind of doesn't. Um, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of. That's the I definitely before. think. Yeah. So I definitely think I can improve on that. Here's a little sneak peek. Here's page one. Inked. Oh boy. Oh man. Fantastic. So this, like, I, I love saw, that. 
I still have to do more texturing, but like the basic, mm -hmm. the line work and the, the, the blacks are kind of in, but. Uh, that shadow, that little triangular shadow in the back. I love that, how you reversed out the, um, the lines, the little cracks and the cobblestones. That's gorgeous. Um, I love, I love the feeling of looking through into another space. There's something really, really cool about that too. Awesome. Thank I'm you. so excited. This is going to, yeah, this is terrific. Thank you. Uh, issue three is definitely, I think, you know, you can't help but improve on some mm -hmm. things. And sometimes you got to just re do rocks for a week to, uh, right. But you know, yeah. I keep on bringing up rocks just because I've been rock heavy for the past week. Yeah, rocks There's are important. No way to get around that. Yeah, I think I told you I have, I have a buddy who paints um, almost exclusively exclusively rocks. Um, he's gotten pretty good at it. Good at it. Can't enunciate today. Actually, yeah, there's nothing, nothing wrong with doing lots of rocks. I'm gonna ink some just for the heck of it, just to uh, play around with my. Pen. You ever get that where you? you start practicing drawing something and when next you get excited when you start to see it in nature mm. these rocks that's, <laughs> that's um, interesting yeah have you, have you ever had that i don't know if i have i know i've times that i've um live drawn trees and then i'll get really excited about them um, specific trees definitely yeah definitely it's happened with rocks too i think with architecture too now i'm starting to look at like lintels of houses oh. being more conscious of how because the because you have to have something that holds up the wall underneath the opening or that's over that goes over the opening of the door and i think i've just been paying more attention to that in houses um yeah structural stuff like that if we're talking houses 100 percent, i've been obsessed with architecture for so long yeah i could i can definitely see that in your yeah. in your stuff yeah yeah architecture to me is just i don't know it it's so beautiful so different and yet you can group them which makes it a really interesting it's like okay that is a craftsman style house but mm. it's different because it's got, you know, this and that. And, you know, those two little changes completely change the whole, like, sense of the place. Ah, man, yeah, I, I could go on and on about architecture. That's awesome. I would love uh, to walk around um, Philly sometime with you. Oh, man. Yeah, because I, I think I, I don't think I've been in a city that maybe maybe Boston, those old colonial cities and the architecture is just great. Yeah, Boston it has some amazing architecture too. Even though most of the most of those old houses are just big, they're not anything any wild Frank Lloyd Wright or mm -hmm. wild like um, the the shapes are very conservative, very stable and grounded. Yep. Um, but yeah, they're beautiful. Yeah, I mean colonials are. are very simple but i don't know they just convey something else to me whenever i whenever i see them um yeah that's you know people say that uh, lovecraft basically was just like architecture travel log and oh. that's the stuff that i love the most <laughs> it's right, like right. just him talking about gambrel roofs and this yeah. and that and i'm like yeah i love that stuff i'm gonna have to look up gambrel gambrel roofs now yeah, they're like, um, they're, I guess it would be almost like barn type roofs where they have the peak and then they have the sides. Oh, um, okay. So yeah, it's that's... got the two, it's got a, sort of the angle that's very steep at the bottom. And then the second angle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's just, yeah, so there's like essentially two ridges and then the edge. I see, so. yeah. Oh, gamble roofs, wow. Pretty cool. And... Welcome to the, um, our gamble roofs live stream <laughs> if you're just joining us today or just joining us right now and dormers is there anything more evil than a dormer like i, I can't look at a dormer is a just... dormer like a gable is that like the little mini yes. roof that yeah, the yeah, window yeah. sticks out of yeah yes. they're pretty i love i love adding those on buildings i don't know if there's an architecture 
girl feature more than an archway or a niche um, that I enjoy more than adding a dormer. Yeah, there's just something about them. I look up there and I'm like, some some crazy ritual happened up there. Oh, right. I just you can't were at the House of the Seven Gables. I was. In, I was your, in your last trip to, where was that? Was that Salem? It was in Salem, yeah, it was, it was in Salem. Salem. Yeah. And were there actually seven? Are those yeah. dormers or gables? I'm assuming those... they, were, they were talking about. Gables, yeah. yeah. Okay, they were actually gables, all right. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's why uh, we go to New England a lot. I mean, I have a brother up there, but um, we just essentially take trips to towns that are like architecturally preserved most of the time. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like Rhode Island and some places in Rhode Island and Marblehead we were just in, which is beautifully I think preserved. I think I have. That's like a seaside. Yeah. yeah I think I have been there. Yeah, it was really nice. Yeah, that stuff is, those places are awesome. It, it's, um, it's a shame we don't. I mean, I think we preserve our old buildings marvelously well, even though our even though the uh, statutes aren't as rigorous for preserving old stuff like that as they are um, in Great Britain, for instance. Yeah. I know you just have to go through a ton of stuff if you want to do anything with an old building, um, even if it's just the bare skeleton that's left of an old building, you still have to go through a lot of hoops to, to, to preserve it. Yeah. I am do anything with it. It, it, is a, it is a wonder that we, we do preserve things to that degree without rigorous laws like that. Yeah, maybe I, it's a maybe it's a testament to maybe we don't need rigorous laws to yeah to trust people to do the right thing with that. But yeah, yeah and then occasionally you'll find some, you know, well, in a lot of cities in the U.S., it'll be skyscrapers, and then nestled in between two is just like this little church that's been right. there for right, right, <laughs> right. You right, find yeah. that in Pittsburgh, you know? Yep, we have that downtown. Yeah. yeah. So That's every other building downtown. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Uh, I was listening to somebody talk about it was Frankenstein because I, you know, I have Frankenstein on the brain, mm -hmm. um, and he was saying that too much cross hatching looks ugly. That was Bernie Wrightson. Yeah, uh -huh. um, somebody was talking about it. Not that, and there isn't much cross hatching in Bernie Wrightson. And I'll uh -huh. be completely honest, I never thought about it before. I've always just considered cross hatching to be just another tool, but if you have too much, everything has this gritty texture. I'm like, yeah, I guess that's true. Uh, so I, now I'm looking at things a little differently. Um, I have some, you know, art books with pen and ink artists and I'm like, oh, I guess that is maybe like a unspoken rule. Cause I've never heard it before. Mm. What's the one there's one that I've, book that I've always wanted to buy but never broke down and bought it. It's like a Arthur A. Guptil. He has a whole book just on different hatching techniques. Oh, okay. Fairly well known. Yeah. I don't know. It's interesting though. I, I haven't... It's really like it's always felt um, like very heavy cross hatching is a little out of place if it's not a uh, an intaglio um, or some kind of engraving. Oh, interesting. Yeah. It feels like the artist saw that and wanted it. Like they saw a Doré. They really wanted to replicate that look, but they uh, wanted to do it in ink. That's interesting. Yeah. So that's like when I was doing pen and ink a lot, that, that wasn't something that I thought about or should avoid, you know? So, okay. So to me, it was whatever, whatever I can do to get, you know, that value. Um, mm -hmm. And admittedly, at first it's like, okay, can I get that value? And then it's like, now that I'm skilled enough, I can get the value, but now I need to get the texture and mm -hmm. the value. Right, right, yeah. So there's yeah. layers for sure. Yeah, yeah, no lie. That's, um, that's definitely a skill. That's like a skill waypoint is um using yeah using texture to communicate value and lighting stuff 
you know what I really like is when they do spray paint planets, you can really, if you use the lid of that, of that bottle, you can put it down and you can actually do the halo of light around the uh, planet, which is pretty sweet. <laughs> that's spray. the real stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's what I hope to accomplish. <laughs> Someday, maybe Attain. you'll get to that level. Maybe. <laughs> Where you can do um, spray paint planets. Or spin art. Spin art is cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a big one. Splatter, spin, spray. It's all, they, as long as it starts with an S. I think. Right. They used to have a different fast S art, um, like every day or every Monday or something on the quad at my at my college. That's funny. I think half the time I I didn't have enough time. I just had to get to my next class, so I just take whatever the free thing was, whether it was like sunglasses or something hmm. that you were supposed to get the art done on, and I would just walk away. Like, cool, some blank, uh, blank dog tags. That's so funny. Figure out something to do with these. Yeah, I mean, there's something about pen and ink that feels just so natural, mm -hmm. like, even just sketching for me. As much as I love the brush, don't get me wrong, like yeah. that, that was a comic book thing. Like, yep. you know, brushes are so, so ingrained in the history and all that kind of stuff. And, right. And, when was the first time you picked up um, using a brush for inking? Because for me, it wasn't until, uh, like, I didn't use it at all in college. I just sort of stumbled upon it. Yeah, definitely not college. It was, I mean, I don't know. Not long ago, I should say. Well, I shouldn't say that not long ago. The, compared to relative time I've right. been drawing. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, it was a huge, um, at the time, it still is kind of amazing to me. This is a huge revelation to me at the time. I was super excited about it. I was telling everybody, all my artist friends, I was like trying to get them to ink with a brush. That's funny. Um, just cause it was so, it just looked so, I just thought it looked so cool. It looked yeah. very animated, um, which was always, I think something that I wanted, uh, I wanted that look. Yeah, it's just so bold and like, mm -hmm. like elegant. Like it's so nice when you somebody that when you see somebody that can use a brush well. I just yeah. for comic books, <clears throat> it just pops off the page. Yep, absolutely. Well, yeah. the, the funny thing is, when I was when I was in high school, I was doing these watercolor paintings, and I kept on getting a smaller and smaller brush for these paintings, and finally my. Uh, teacher he's like i don't know use this brush and it was a number two kalinsky sable brush mm -hmm. and i would I, I started inking using watercolor um but like traditionally mm. so these were they looked like they were done with a pen but it was brush but it was watercolor so it was mm. colored yeah it was kind of crazy it was completely by accident and i didn't kind of know what i was doing um but little did I know years later, you know, that would kind of be the way I go. Yeah, that's awesome. Sable brushes, pretty nice. It's always, um, I think that's the riskiest expense I'll ever, because it's, you can only so tell so much about the quality of a brush when you're holding it yeah. in the store or wherever. Yeah, or heaven forbid, like buying it online. Ugh, I know, it's the worst. <laughs> it's the worst. Th there are times where I'm like, okay, I'll try this brush. Um, and I get it and it works out. So I'll order several more and then yeah. it just it's just not the same. It's like there's batches yeah. of them yeah, wow. that aren't going to be nearly as good. Even right out of the gate, they're not going to be as good. And that's At some just... point, you have to visit the sable farm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you have exactly. to meet the actual sables that you're... <laughs> yeah. Is that new intro? Is that, have you changed the intro at all? No, it should be the same. Okay, it's the same. I wasn't remembering the uh, big musical. Yeah, I needed a way to, 
to enter like exit out of that. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, gotcha. I'll just I'll throw in. I'll throw in that. This thing. It's pretty cool. I like it. You know, the thing about pen and ink too is I think I can I can do it for hours and hours straight because I don't hold on to the pen nearly as hard as I do like a brush because mm -hmm. you don't yeah. you don't need the same control so yeah you don't have to have a, a death grip on it yep. necessarily yeah white knuckling that thing is is tough to sustain um that's part of the reason for my comic where why I chose to do the characters in brush and everything else in pen and ink because it's just too hard. It's too too strenuous. It goes a lot faster, I've found, when it's all brushed. Um, but I mean, I like the idea of the characters being in a different, yeah, like style. I don't want to say style. It's still, it's still the same style, but a, a right. technique. A different approach. Yeah, I think it helps them maybe stand out. I think I have some sample yeah. pages. Are there any sample pages here that would be a good example of that? Yeah, if you don't, if you don't yeah, I've got, you know, they kind of, um, their clothing is still pen, but at least their faces and hands, so they pop all right. Yeah, no, that looks great. I mean, yeah. ultimately you want the backgrounds to recede like a little yeah. bit, so yeah. I mean, it makes perfect sense. Yeah, the, gra the, the gradients you're getting are just crazy on those blue lines. Yeah, no, you're I, using crayon colored pencil. Um, I always forget. I might, I might experiment with crayon. It's, I'm using the. It's not really what they're for. They're like the blue line pencils that you would use for animation. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think I need to pick up because I really don't need a fancy. Um, it's it's for like so that it'll scan. You can scan it in and take out the blue lines. Yep. Yep. I really don't need that capability so i'm going to see if i can find a big lot of just blue blue pencils yeah um so i can save myself some money because those the ones that i've started out with are kind of pricey i've i've tried using blue line because i know some people will start with blue line then they do like the, the final sketch over that and then they ink over that but i cannot do it i just i wish i could because i think it would be a very cool like process to do that yeah but hmm. this doesn't work for me what do you where do you where does it sort of break down i think my eye gets confused when i see the blue line as opposed to the pencil because normally what i'll do is i'll do the roughs and then i knock them down so you can barely see them just like mm -hmm. it's just shadows you know but you can't really do that with the blue line and i just my eye gets all Confused. Gotcha. That makes sense. I know your pencils are also um, also tend to be very very detailed. Um, yeah. You know, you know, it's not it's not because a lot of people I know will it'll just be very light um, the application of the blue line. Very it'll keep it loose. One buddy of mine he does these incredibly tiny. His thumbnails are like. Thumb, they're thumbnails. They're like um, an inch by an inch, and there's oh, no geez. way anybody but him can understand what what's happening. I mean, it works great for him though, and it forces yeah. him to keep them quick. So, wow, it works, that it works for him, but he also is, is able to, yeah, literally a thumbnail. That's crazy. Yep, he, and he is able to really do the. Um, he's, a, he's the one person I, I can think of who does the blue line really well. I wish I did. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, I want to have things like that. So is this going to be, is this a, a practice cave? Yeah, this is just. Wow, that's looking gorgeous. I'm just using a pen and ink. I'm, I'm... Nice. Wow, that is looking really, really nice. Oh, thank you. Yeah. This is on some I, typing paper. That really, um, yeah, what you were saying about not just one type of rock, I'm really seeing that. Um, that's awesome. 
Thanks. It's, you can sort of see where the this so this seems like a water formed cave. Mm. <laughs> I don't know if that's right. Yeah, or not. yeah, yeah. yeah. That's... Um, but you can see you can sort of see the flow of the water. That's interesting. Through. Yeah. yeah. I gave up on that, Griffin. Just for the time being, you mean? Um, I'm gonna, yeah, I think I'm gonna take another crack at it. Yeah. Sometime I can pull up some photo reference and I'll do it. moment. Are there any um, side stories that you're kicking around as you're working on Horus? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, there, there's definitely some 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 background that I want to fill out. And I, I think side stories are the best way to do that um mm -hmm. like of the world yeah um, and in the world yeah and some characters but i'm not entirely sh like right now i've just been writing horus based stuff and he's in every single scene you know what i right. mean right it's a totally different thing and i'll, ha I'll really have to i think i'll work up to that for sure mm-hmm yeah, um, that would be that would be very different. Um, that'd be a totally because he he defines so much of the he frames out the story, even the way he talks. I feel like I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, that's that's kind of how I look. He at sort it. of yeah. He pushes things forward. He he's almost self narrating. <laughs> exactly, a hundred percent. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody asked on a stream the other day. You know, how do you convey? You're breaking up a little bit. Oh. My back. Yeah, you're back. I think. Let me move my mic a little bit. Here. Um, somebody asked on a stream the other day, "How do I convey emotion?" You know, with him wearing a helmet. I'm like, well, you know, I really try to animate him as much as possible with his hands, and you know, even his little plug in the background, a secondary animation, uh, a secondary oh, animation, wow. kind of feels, yeah. you know. Yeah. But then I'm like. And let's be honest, if he's thinking something, he's saying it. <laughs> so, yep. yep. So you're right. He, he absolutely it self narrates. Works. It works. It's always, um, it's a cool creative challenge, though, that you set yourself. It's, there are some characters that really stand out in the history of characters. I was talking with somebody about uh, Wallace and Gromit. Yeah. Here, and how Gromit. All of his emotions come out through his eyebrows. Yeah, you're right. Sometimes he's even on all fours. He can't even use his hands really to um, talk. Yeah. Man, I love Curse of the Were Rabbit. I think is a brilliant movie. I need to rewatch that. I haven't seen oh it since God. I was a kid. We, we went to see it when it came out in theaters. I love that movie. It's really brilliant. My brother uh, introduced me to Wallace and Gromit. Kind of before it blew up, he had these like shorts he would bring over. And to be honest, yeah. I was like, this is a little weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's out there. It's out um, there. But yeah. once you get, I'm like, okay, I get it. Those standalone, it. yeah, those standalone shorts definitely without context are a little strange. Yeah, no doubt. Great stuff, though. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I bought some colored pencils the other day, which um, I think I'm going to kind of play around with. I like, as I get more com uh, familiar with stuff, I keep kind of layering things. Are you familiar with uh, Bill Sienkiewicz at all? No, not at all. Um, he's a comic book artist, but he 
even back in the day, I don't know how Marvel let him do it. I mean, he really used mixed media pastels and ink mm. and he just layered and layered stuff, mm. really expressive stuff. Um, and I'm like, ah, I've always wanted to at least kind of play around with that. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think I'm going to uh, cool. potentially maybe do some sketch cards because sketch cards are nice. They're, they're small. If you mess them up, it's not the end of the world. You didn't spend a hundred hours on it, you know. Right. Yeah. I, I actually think with your style, you would you would do really well with sketch cards. Okay. I'll try yeah. them out. Yeah, you really. I think you would do well. Um, like of my characters or of other people's characters. Of your characters of of the book you're working on currently. I yeah. I can I can picture those characters in the little sketch cards. Okay. Yeah, I would try that. I mean, that would be. Yeah, low low uh, initial outlay of um, time definitely I could bust a bunch of those out. That would be that would be fun. I would. That does sound like it does sound like a very enjoyable, pretty relaxing sort of. And honestly, for me, and I'm not trying to like sell you on sketch cards, yeah. but it uh, <laughs> I, I don't have stock in any sketch card company. Um, <laughs> you swear? Yeah, you <laughs> yeah, right. But. But man, it, it has really helped me doing panels, like small panels. Oh. Um, and, you know, just because you have a lot of characters, you, you probably have way more characters than I have, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it might be a really cool way to get to know your characters more. Not yeah. to say you, you don't, but you know what I mean? Like, right. if you don't get to a character at, in, in 30 pages, maybe before that you yeah, start. Yeah, them out. Yeah. I've always loved any book that has like the cast or meet the cast or like something like that. Yeah. Um, I've always loved that. And uh, yeah, character bios and stuff like that. I could definitely see doing, some, doing something like that. And it is, it is nice um, as a resource for readers to go back and keep people straight. Yeah. Uh, check who, wait, who was this again? And heck, I mean, with all your characters, um, you can sell little little trading cards or packs yeah, of, totally. you know. Yep, very much so. I would love that. That would be, and then I'd need a game. <laughs> I need a game that people <laughs> could play because they can't just be. They can't just be trading cards, you know. Well, if you're, if I'm spending the money on printing them, there has to be. Yeah, you could. You could it, get it. it would balloon out. Yeah, but I'm not saying I wouldn't do it. Um, I would love to do something like that. That sounds like a lot, a lot of fun. Yeah, for me, sketch cards. It's just one of those. It's low hanging fruit. You can do it on the couch. It's low stress and right. You know. Yeah, that's great for me. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's funny. Um, now that I'm getting a little more comfortable with rocks, um, and I, you know, I have to implement them in this particular book. <clears throat> um, I'm gonna have to come up with a story that's <laughs> essentially set in a forest to force right. myself, right, to make trees. You know, wasn't it um, Frank Miller that did Sin City so that he could practice drawing cars and women? That, yeah, that's what I heard. Is that true? Or that you probably told me that. I think that's, I did. That's probably but, where I heard that. I, I, I could have swore he said it too, so it wasn't even okay. like you know. You heard it from Frank Miller. I could have swore there was an interview where he said that. Um, that. It's a good. Um, it's, a, it's a good practice. I don't know what that would be for me. A book that's just about bicycles, just about people <laughs> riding bicycles and driving biplanes. I guess. It's about the Tour de France. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tragically, never completed after the author's suicide. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, I don't. I don't know about that. Maybe, maybe something else. So this is interesting. What is your take on? Whenever I was doing pen and ink, I always felt like I was I was failing if I did this kind of stuff here. And I don't know if you can see it like really well. Okay. Um, like so this. So yeah. if I need say I need like a, a one solid, you know, plane, right? Mm -hmm. 
Let's just do this here. All right. So I need this to be one value of gray. Right. What I used to try to do, well, my pen's going wonky here, is essentially do long lines the whole way. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Right. And I and I yep. have done that for sure. Yeah. But the more I see people, the more I see essentially a lot of yeah shorter lines. They do hatching. Yep. Then they just do more hatching. Second line. And I've always, yeah, and that's something I've always avoided too, is especially having the hatch marks run end to end like that. Yes. So that it creates, creates those, um, it creates those implied lines. Exactly. Yeah, but I don't I, know. Seeing I, it, it's not, it doesn't look bad. It looks but good. But I, I've been, you know, just kind of looking at some stuff this past yeah. weekend. I'm like, I guess maybe all those years I was a little, maybe I was overly worried about that and I didn't yeah, need to be so. because... I mean, it kind of, I mean, it, the thing is for rocks, that's different for the side of a building, you know, yeah. would that ruin it? You know, you can get away with this for rocks for sure. Right. But, I um, I bet you could do it. Yeah. I bet you could do it with buildings too. I bet that wouldn't look too bad. I should, I should find an example. Um, right. But I have seen, I'm trying to think of where it was. Essentially the idea is very similar, but um, it was just kind of like, all right, so there's some hatching this way, hatching this way, you know, mm -hmm. even hatching this way. It's almost like as long as the hatching stays in perspective of the plane, mm. then you're fine. That's wild. And that's, that's just something I have said. I don't know if that's true or not. <laughs> so don't right. like, but the more I look at it, the more I think I'm like, that's really all they're doing. So if I went crazy and did like, you know, I don't know something that's just really off and kind of breaks the illusion of the plane, then I could see that being wrong. But as long as you kind of stay roughly in that, I think it still works. Hmm. That's amazing. So that's I might kind almost of, need to see an example of the perspective. Yeah, I know. Kind of sort of I just saw something, into. just saw something today. Let me, and I was like, that was fast. It was fascinating to me because I had never seen that yeah, specifically. I mean, admittedly pen and ink, it's mostly organic stuff. I mean, some mm -hmm. people do architectural stuff for sure, but the stuff that I'm looking at is horror and, you know, like. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be a lot of. Uh, let me see if I can. Natural forms. Yeah, I'll have to find it and post it one of these days. Yeah. I could be totally wrong, but. Yeah, I'd like to see that. It made me think of. Well, I'm going to run and get a book and see if I can find examples of this. Um, but be right back. <clears throat> Let's see. I did, I have, do you have this one book by this artist? Um, he's a Canadian guy, name of Gerhardt. And he did, this is like a cemetery scene. I don't know if you can see. This oh, yeah, is, yeah. This is very much that edge, that edge to edge sort of um, that you're talking up here. And then some cross -hash hashing for the shadow, which almost seems like He's using these like edge to edge shading lines for hmm. the surfaces for the shading. And yeah. then all the shadows are actually cross hatching, which is interesting. That's fascinating. Who is this? I, uh, Gerhard. He did work on Dave Sims, um, Cerebus. Oh, um, wow. This Jeez. is, um, yeah, so it's all Dave Sims characters. Um, that's Cerebus. And it's all Gerhard. Gerhard did all the backgrounds. And just you get these really dense, really yeah. dense examples of cross hatching hmm. in this. It's one of the things that drew me to the series um, originally. This book is uh, called Melmoth, and it's it's just the story of Oscar Wilde um, passing. It's wow. just he took he took Oscar Wilde, put him in his own fantasy world, and then just told the story of him. Wow. 
Yeah, yeah it's a beautiful drawing though. Jeez. It is. Gerhard has some really, really nice his um his ink techniques are really, really impressive. He there's a really good interview series um, with him online. That I, that I read one time and it felt like I learned a lot. He talked about a turning point where he stopped um, drawing. He talked about a brick wall where he stopped drawing the individual bricks in the wall and started drawing a brick wall. And I was like, that's exactly what that's like. Um, yeah. Yeah. You start, you sort of stop drawing blades of grass and start drawing a lawn at some point. Yep. Yeah, I like I like his stuff a lot. Yeah, you know what? Now that I think about it, maybe I could um, devote like one stream just to the um, Christmas Carol. Yeah. Illustrations. So I'm just doing pen and ink and just doing uh, sort of classic illustration stuff. That would uh, that could make a lot of sense, and you have um, sort of separate audiences for that. And you're building interest. Do you think, not to get too ahead of it, but do you think that might be something you would kickstart for the printing? I don't know. Yeah, I, ha I definitely haven't thought about that. Yeah. Um, well, it's, it's it would be cool, though. Scary. I mean, I mean, it, it's one of those things. I know as artists, we always, you know we jump to the newest thing we want to do or whatever. Yep, yep. But the thing about this is I've been talking about it for a while. It's, it's definitely stuck in my brain. It's not going anywhere, you know? Right. Um, so it will get done. I just, I'm not entirely sure the how just yet. Right. Well, it'd be exciting. Yeah. I think I can't think of anybody that I know would be more perfect for that. Um, yeah, than you, thank you. So. Appreciate it. Yeah, it is interesting. I don't know who's who's currently still listening, but you know, uh, comic book fans versus you know, sort of just art technique illustration fans. You know, um, I would be curious what the overlap is. You know, not that there's anything wrong with it either way. I mean, you don't have to like you know, mm -hmm. boring rock illustrations. I get, I get that. <laughs> You know, I can look at a lot of rocks before um, getting bored, <laughs> especially if they're like that cave. Um, yeah. I almost, I almost want to pop a. Oh yeah, it's like it's like all you need is like a character in that scene, and it's instantly a story just because of how interesting that cave is. Oh, cool! Thank you. Yeah, I think it's. Yeah, Do, is that from reference? That's r very roughly from refer reference. Okay. Awesome. Um, yeah. It, it so what I started doing, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna try to do everything from reference, just because I don't have the the skills yet to do to to improvise anything. Mm -hmm. After a couple of days, though, I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna essentially get the structure. So it's the entrance of a cave, and there's a shape here, a shape there, and a shape there. Gotcha. But but specifics is all me basically. Mm -hmm. um, so this is that's kind of. I, I'm still there's a little bit of a crutch, you know, with the structure. But as far as the lighting and the shadows and the the textures, then I f I'm starting to feel like I can I can put that in. So you can do that from from memory. Or... So bicycles or anything? Yeah. Well, it's it's not every everything mechanical because you're doing mechanical stuff in your book. So, so I mean, even that is def is definitely difficult. Doing that in perspective is a hmm. challenge. Yeah, um, having these really graceful, uh, slowly curving lines. I don't know. I I think that's just a physical. That's just a challenge um, for anybody yeah. to do. Yep. But I, yeah, I don't know. So, yeah, bikes I've gotten better at definitely because you sort of draw that diamond shape. It's but but putting a person on a bike that's a completely different thing. Yeah, there's no doubt. I think bikes, bikes are really complex. Cars are um, still still challenging, uh, but I've gotten in the habit of when we're driving somewhere on the highway. 
Um, obviously, I won't be the one driving, but I'll pull out a sketchbook and I'll try to get down really quick structural mm. sketches of cars as they pass. Yeah. And that's helped a lot. Yeah. I think pe really people and their faces, I, I think that's probably going to be something that I'm going to be working on forever. Yeah, same. I mean, <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, there are always there's always room for improvement. Yeah, I send my artwork to Richard Friend, um, right. as yeah. you know, right. uh, who has a Patreon. Basically, kind of looks over the work, gives critiques. He's really it's been invaluable, honestly. Um, and the thing is, every every time I send him stuff, he he says something that just really hits home for me. Right. Um, and the good thing, for example, he was talking about, I think he was talking about anatomy. I, I can't remember entirely, but he said, you know, as you progress and as you've been drawing for a while, you're just going to have to revisit stuff. You know, it's not yeah. like yeah. you learned how to do something and you can just move on. Like yeah. you just, you need to revisit it and it won't take as long to kind of get back into it, but you know, you're going to have to do that. And it seems obvious, but until he said right. that, I'm like, damn yeah. it you're you're totally right yeah that's great that's really encouraging too because even beyond just being rusty i tend to think oh man I'm, I'm sort of backsliding here yes like i used to really able to be able to knock these things out of the park mm -hmm. um and what happened uh, part exactly. of it is maybe i'm just not warmed up but a big part of it yeah it's just like you said that's a, that's a really good point so I, I feel like faces in anatomy, that's something I, I definitely reference a lot. You know, it's sort of my, my own, if I could do medical anatomy, you know, I would, yeah. I'd be doing medical anatomy. So, right. um, but you, even so you still got to refer, you got to go back and wait a minute, how does the knee bend and what does it look like? Yeah, you know, you and that's okay. Room. Light your candle and go down the basement steps to your room full of cadavers and just <laughs> exactly. check check to make sure that you got the the arteries running into that liver. Exactly. You got those right. People are people will know. Go check that stuff. I um I wish I had a, a room full of cadavers. Be really handy, right? Oh my god, that'd be amazing. Yeah. Be nice. Actually, I'm gonna think. I'm, I think I'm gonna have to write a story about an artist who uh, starts killing people just to get the reference. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Would he? Um, you think he would uh, kill the people who are closest to him first, oh, just as a moral sort of thing to prove that he's? It's not like this selfish pursuit, you know. Wow, that's that's pretty dark. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not the now that I've thought of it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I don't know. It's just the first thing that pops into my head. No, no, I. But yeah, yeah, that would be that'd be fascinating. Or even um, I don't know, going along with Leonardo da Vinci for one of his um, grave digging, his nights of grave di grave digging. Yeah, exactly. Um, what would what would that have been like? Yeah. To be the um, yeah, to be the sort of accomplice. Of, I mean, along for that ride. Talk about taking art seriously, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that's, you know, I always reference Frankenstein a lot because I, the one of the main things I always take away from Frankenstein is just his absolute obsession with something. And it was... This is the, this is the story. Not the, the story, story. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gotcha. Um, is, is the doctor's uh, obsession and that, how that obsession, you know, makes him pull away from his family and just mm. essentially a, just become a different person mm -hmm. because he's so obsessed with this thing and I, I always always essentially equate it to art always and and mm -hmm. yeah because it's so similar you know you you listen to artists who have been doing it their whole lives and to yep. be a great great artist they basically had to just live yep for their art they didn't watch their yeah. kids rate you know grow up they didn't yep. do all those other things you give yeah you give a lot up potentially um yeah 
all gave some. Some gave all. Uh, and then when he finally realizes sort of his mistake, you know, yeah. he yeah. creates the monster and he's like, oh, it's gone, thankfully. You know, I, I, <laughs> right. I didn't, you know, I, I wasn't valuing things I should have. And then that thing mm. comes, rears its head back and starts, you know, murdering people. Yeah, following him. Yeah. So, man, it's such a great story. It's terrific. Yeah, those old, uh, the old monster novels. Not to be underestimated. I was just telling Jane, some uh, my wife, about something from the a scene from The Invisible Man that stuck with me um, from when I was a kid. But yeah, and the the Bram Stoker's Dracula, fantastic, fantastic book. I still haven't. I've never actually read Frankenstein. I need to make time for that. I mean, that I don't happened. want to push it on people, but man, <laughs> it's just no. I understand. It, but I'm sure. So I'm sure it's good. Sure, it's very good. There's a really good one I read recently that's not as well known. Um, the House on the Borderlands. I don't know if you ever heard of it. I've heard of it, but I've never read it. It was fun. It was really fun. An old man uh, buys a mansion. He, he and his sister are going to kind of retire there, and it's up in the Scottish Highland, Highlands. And it has this mystical connection with a identical mansion built on another plane of existence hmm. and it starts pulling things in from that plane and oh, wow. before you know it he's defending his house from these swine people it's, it's pretty good pretty exciting story yeah it I has think... th that sort of flavor of the classic monster monster tale yeah i've never read it i think it's come up on a list of like great classic horror yeah uh, books i I'm trying to think of the one. Is it um, Hell House? Okay. Never heard I, of that. I think it's Richard Matheson. I'm blanking. Okay. It's been a long time since I read it. It's supposed to be one of like you know the great horror oh, stories. Oh, really. Hell House. Okay. It uh, it was okay. It was okay. Yeah. I, I think um, my definition of horror and other people's definition of horror varies greatly. Sure. And I'm just. And maybe I shouldn't even use the word horror a lot of times. Yeah. It's for me, it's more about like being or a thriller or weird fiction or something. Yeah. And horror, you can have horror elements. That's cool. But a, a lot of straight up horror stuff is just it's a little too, a little too gross. Heavy on the gross. Yeah, I think that it's a, it becomes a lot about the violence. If I'm talking about the same sort of stuff yep. that you are. Yep. And less about. Because there's a, there's horror in older fiction. There was this sense of horror, like you were saying with Frankenstein. Oh my gosh, what have I done? Mm -hmm. um, and it's more of a psychological thing than just oh my gosh, I'm being chased. Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, there's something very powerful about that. Yeah, when you were talking, I was thinking about the one Lovecraft story uh, about the, I think it's called like the burial mound or something. And when we were talking about architecture, I was thinking, because yes, he does a he does do a terrific treatment of old colonial buildings. Yeah. But the way he described the architecture, even like these um, different lifts that they would use to get around inside the buildings. Um, it really made a vivid, vivid picture of this like bizarre subterranean civilization that he was describing. Yeah, and it was just yeah, guy had a gift for um, a gift for architecture, for which describing is weird. architecture. I know, which sounds crazy, but um, yeah. And I'll I'll be honest, I have over the you know I don't know past thirty years, I have read many many lovecraft inspired or just yeah. straight up lovecraft clones that From never come anywhere near it okay as far as the atmosphere gotcha. and it's, and again this could just be me but like yeah. without without that like knowledge of the architecture and the history of stuff it just doesn't feel the same it's just like okay there's a great alien yep being and it's come down to murder people i'm like okay that's yeah. great but yeah, that's, that's fun yeah what did his home look like <laughs> yeah, right yeah what, 
and it's it's like um it would be like writing a lord of the rings fan fiction it's like well do you know any icelandic um languages <laughs> like what's yeah. your what's your knowledge base is it exactly is it, is it anything like yeah i just don't think you can i don't think you can recreate things like that but that's good to hear i've i've been very curious about the other mythos stories like the stuff by august b derla and some of the other people um, that did those after after him but if they're not worth um no really okay really not the only other author that I've considered actually reading uh, to kind of get the same flavor, but it's a very different flavor, is Robert E. Howard. Yeah, is that the King in Yellow? No, no, that's um, oh my god, I'm blanking on him, Richard. Oh, I'm blanking on it. Sorry. King in Yellow is pretty wild, but it's not crazy. It's right. just uh, there's a couple. A couple of stories that are just really weird. Um, not Richard. Robert Chambers. Robert Chambers. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's Very right. cool, though. Very that's cool. Not Rob, that's not um, Howard. Yeah, yeah. Robert Robert E. Howard is Conan and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. Um, but he's the only one that I that I've heard sort of. Obviously, the architecture and stuff like that's not going to be the same. But. Yeah. Um, I don't know where I was going with that. That's all right. You had brought up um, Conan the other day, and I meant to bring this up to you. Um, have you ever read any of the Fafford and the Grey Mauser? No, Stories but... Stories by Lieber? No, I haven't. Because you were talking about how much you liked the sort of episodic treatment of the Conan stories, if I'm yeah, remembering yeah, correctly. Yeah. And that's very much Fafford and the Grey Mauser. And around, uh, probably a little later... Probably came along a little later than the Conan stuff, um, but it is definitely inspired by it, and in a similar vein of where you have the your two hero archetypes, you have the northern barbarian and the um, the gray mauser, who's like this very crafty thief, a little bit he knows a little bit enough like enchanting to get by, and those are those are pretty fun stories. I've yeah, that sounds people. that sounds fun. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's something about the episodic stuff. Mm -hmm. Like you can just poke your head in, see what's going on. Yep. You know, yep. if there's a bigger story or if there's characters that are reoccurring, great. But you know. Yep. Yeah, not a, not a requirement. Yeah. Yeah, I I read a couple of the books. They were pretty fun. And they have a lot of, um, I think, DNA of a lot. A lot of fantasy movies have drawn from those books in particular, and games um, have drawn from those books. There was a lot of stuff I recognized from those. All right, one more rock. rock. Yeah, tell us about this. Um, the second one that you did here, you busted that out pretty quickly. Is that yeah. like a more of a cliff face? Uh, it's a, I'm thinking like it's a pathway. I didn't do the back, but gotcha. yeah, you're walking through. So there would be stuff there, but nice. I just, I, I wanted to get, you know, the direct, uh, I wanted to get the lighting down. I wanted to get some volume into the rocks, which I feel like I did. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, granted, I'm using, <laughs> I'm using pen and ink. So right. this is not going to be the style for the comic, but I think this helps me visualize like the, the form a lot mm -hmm. better Good. so i have i literally have like 50 or 60 probably more studies these are nice i hope you do i hope you don't just um i hope you're not throwing i'm sure you're not but i hope you're not throwing these away i was going to but yeah don't I mean, do I'll, it don't do I'll, it i mean i'll take i'll take them I'll, if you don't I'll hang um, on buy, buy them from you oh man all right yeah i'll hang on to them and yeah. uh You should do a giveaway. Rocks. The top, the hundredth comment <laughs> gets gets five rock drawings. Pile of rocks. A big pile of rocks. You know what? Maybe I'll do this one here on the bottom. That does have like that weird drippy okay. formation. Yeah. We'll see, we'll see how that works out.
Alrighty. Yeah, this is really loose. So <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah, this. I mean, this is a very loose study, but I think it's pretty it's... deep. It looks, I guess, pretty detailed, or at least it? it looks like there are a lot of different areas um, of things happening. Yeah, I mean, I have like this whole arc here. I got this formation, and then I have a little bit of in the background. So. The other thing I really need to pay attention to, you know, between comics and sort of traditional illustration is I'm getting, unfortunately, into the habit of outlining things. So, you know, normally if I was going to do a shadow or something, you know, I would do this. But for the comic, I keep, I do that and then I'll do like a, I'll put an edge on it. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Um, like for this rock, if there was a shadow going this way, it should just be like this. Mm -hmm. You know, because you, you don't want to outline it, but for comic books, you do that. Right. You out, yeah, you outline it. It's is that totally like, uh, why is that? Just to make sure it reads quickly? It's become a habit for me. And okay. it, 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 I think it is, it's just a, sh I don't want to say a shortcut, but yeah, it just reads very clearly, I think, you know? Yeah. As yeah. opposed to having to spend a lot of time to make sure it gets to the edge and right. Yeah, that's one of those things like um, trying to force myself to use to spot more spot more blocks just in general because I don't think that's something I naturally fall back on, um, but it's something that. It reads quickly when it's done well. It's just a skill that needs to be built up more. What do you? When do you do that? Is it after, like you lay everything out? Is it you know you have that in mind as you're doing the drawing? Yeah, it's uh, when I'm penciling. I try to keep in mind. I mean, it, unless it's very clear in the thumbnail, usually I'm not. I, I haven't. I'm not thinking about that during the, th the thumbnails. Yeah. Um, but yeah, when I'm when I'm doing the penciling, I'll just put a little X on the, on the inside of an area that I want to fill in with black. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. But I don't do it. I don't do it nearly to the extent I see um, other comic artists do it, like shading across somebody's arm or something. They'll put like a little shadow under the wrist or, you know, yeah, that yep. really slight, really nice stuff. Yeah. I, I really, I have a few like things I do all the time. <laughs> yeah, right. and it it's it's easy because I'm like, okay, I always know that Horace is underneath his helmet. Mm -hmm. It's going to be cast in a shadow. It's going to be solid black to the right, right, left, up or down. And then I kind of use that as I'm like, okay, at minimum, I know that's going to be solid black, mm -hmm. and I try to grow it from there. But I I kind of feel the same way that I could definitely spot blacks better. There could be more blacks. Mm -hmm. um sometimes you're a little nervous about it you know right. just to black you know, and you're not gonna know it until you black it all out right. that that was a mistake yes yeah yeah it's a risk it pays off though it's um yeah. sometimes what i've done is if i'm really kind of him on about a particular large chunk of black i'll scan it in throw it into Photoshop and just use a paintbrush to, to yeah, knock it out. I'm like, okay, that works or that doesn't. Right. Yeah, I was looking at Bernie Wrightson's rocks as well. They're very smooth. I mean, they're like... Cool. I mean, I didn't look at all of the illustrations, but the, the ones for Frankenstein, I did see are really smooth, like polished type rocks. They look great because he puts, he puts an edge of just pure white on them. So, you know, yeah, that, that plane change is pretty much all you need to really, to really show it, which is kind of what I'm using, honestly, for this. I'm 
there's not a lot of detail you know it's just like right. okay i got these big chunks of plane white right and then you know the other side great how much are you finding you're having to think about the 3d form as a whole like that cliff face on the second drawing on the left side where the cliff this, sort of overhangs the path oh well, not the one you're working on yeah, well, now, this one here um, yeah that one did you have to think or when you sketched it out did you be like okay this is where you like um this is this 3d shape and it gets kind of cut into in these places yes that that was the difference between when i was doing it before and this time before i was really okay. i would have a vague idea but yeah. now i'm like okay this this plane changes it goes in this plane changes here i will okay. say though i i know the main shapes but these little edges i've i've been throwing those in later right you know because once i have the big shapes in there i can throw those in pretty easily and i don't have to think too much about those right yeah they can just be sort of zen yeah that's an exercise in restraint i feel because <laughs> how do you balance too much rock detail yeah yep and we'll see you know whenever whenever these rocks are in the background of my fairly detailed drawings depending on what the scene is you know yeah. i'm i'm not sure how that's gonna read so mm -hmm. we'll see that's the great adventure it really is i love i love having a hobby where it can go really wrong after <laughs> hours of work <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, that's nice. It's very calming. Very calming. Very calming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you question why you're alive in the first place. Right, right. And why am I doing this? I suck at it. Yeah, it's, like, it's, it's good. Where else? Where else can you get that? Where else can you get that? I ask. Yeah. Because it's also it's like it's not like you just throw you throw into question that exact drawing at that exact moment. It's, right. You just, it's the all sum of total of your life all of a sudden. Yep. Yeah. It's not like gardening. Plants practically grow themselves. <laughs> and if you have one daisy that sort of falls over and dies, it's not like, yeah. Yeah. It's like, what am why? I doing? I'm a terrible, I'm wasting my time as a car. Yeah, why? Yeah. <laughs> On your knees, screaming at the sky. Yeah. So this is interesting, or maybe not, but for a split second, I, I went back into my old um, habit of cross hatching, right yeah. like in this shadow. Mm -hmm. And that's definitely uglier than the other spots. Huh. Well, there you go. It so maybe never, never uh maybe there is really something to that um is it like 90 degree true cross hatching or is it like at an angle because i always like it when there's a very slight angle between the um versus like a 90 degree cross hatch versus like a, a very slight uh, angle. yeah that's interesting i hadn't thought about that yeah I definitely find the 90 degree waffle print um, sort of cross hatching pretty ugly. There yeah. are not very many applications for that, I feel. Yeah, that's true. So maybe just varying that angle doesn't look so, it almost looks artificial, I think, with the 90 degree, just like the straight 90 degree. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it looks like, um, yeah, computer generated. I had someone many, many years ago, this is, I think this is probably in art school, maybe roughly at just soon after art school. It's an artist friend of mine and they were making some point, you know, about painting versus drawing. Cause I was a drawing major. So not that I did do painting, but you know, it wasn't my focus. So I didn't do a ton of it. Um, and there was just sort of this offhanded comment about, you know, they never, that that artist who only does charcoal or whatever the case it was i can't remember mm -hmm. uh they never became sophisticated enough to be able to use color that you know yeah. they just know value or whatever yeah and it was a really offhanded comment and i don't know if that person even knew i was a drawing major you know right, <laughs> like right. 
and that charcoal and pen and ink was like my major yeah you know tools um <laughs> but i the thought it was... got silent <laughs> somewhere i needed a racer to thud it to the ground and bounced a couple of times <laughs> exactly um but i thought that was a weird kind of take on that um oh see you blake blake just blake has taken off oh have a good thanks. one thanks for thanks, thanks for, for watching for... yep um it was a weird comment to make i thought because i've always thought it's almost the opposite direction where color can be a shortcut yep it can be a crutch to break up your planes yep yeah Absolutely. so yeah i'm like I, we don't have that shortcut we literally have to do every plane a slight mm -hmm. variation in value to yep. show it you know yeah yeah it's like you come in here with your paint bucket just fill in the shapes <laughs> give me a break <laughs> How are you going to, how are you going to show the light is on the side? Well, I'm going to do a darker color red on the other side of the. Yeah. yeah. I'll do blue. I'll do blue. blue. Yeah. It's like, Oh, okay. Whoa. Look, look here. Freaking Van Gogh. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm a little envious of people who are more comfortable with color. Certainly. I can. Oh, yeah. Way. I mean, yeah. this wasn't to say that I don't like painting. I mean, I, I love painting, but I, I thought it was an interesting dismissal of drawing as it being is. you know yeah, okay. merely tone or uh, value based yeah yeah that is a funny angle of attack i loved um painting i would really like to get back into it someday right now it's just a space thing i don't um i really don't we have carpet in our in my in what is my art room and i'm uncomfortable enough inking yeah. in this room with all the carpet um i really couldn't do any acrylic painting in here totally agree in my last house um we had for the first time a utility sink which just made me yeah. jump for joy i'm like yeah, oh my god amazing. i can i can you know clean my brushes and do all that stuff not in a bathroom <laughs> right yeah yeah just uh just blissfully like oh i'm sure this isn't clogging the drains yeah. <laughs> so this it's mineral this, spirits i'm sure it's mineral spirits <laughs> this is what what is essentially liquid plastic that i'm pouring <laughs> down the drain right now i'm exactly. sure it's not doing any harm oh. <laughs> but yeah i i mean i love painting too it's something but you, you got to pick sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, yeah. I'm a, I'm a firm believer that you, you can actually master multiple things, but I think you have to master one at a time, you know, yep. Yep. and then maintaining one while picking up something new, I think is totally doable, but you know, splitting that initial time, I just, you, you never deep dive into either of them. Yeah. More power to anybody who can do that. Absolutely. Um, I'll be right back. That's always, yeah, see ya. Welcome to Nate Taylor's solo live stream. All Nate Taylor, all the time.
Alrighty, I'm back. Alright, hey. Had to check a cadaver. <laughs> yeah. He got loose. I mean, I mean, <laughs> I'm like, you got to stay here. I got to examine your, your uh, quads later on. It's for my art. You're doing, you're doing art. Great service. Oh man. So we had a stream the other day about heroes and villains. Oh um, yeah. For Alterna. Um, <laughs> I've been mulling that over. Um, How recent was that? Did I forget if I what I saw that one? Just or not. the other day, Thursday. Okay, I might have missed. Yeah, okay. I'll have to go back and watch that. Kind of blanking yeah. on that. Um, which is always, I think, a fascinating topic. Like people's definitions of either are um, always surprising to me. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, oh, so. You know, the term, like, anti-hero gets used oh, a lot. Yeah. Um, and I, you know. That, that just means mean hero, right? <laughs> kind of. But then some people, like, I don't know. They could be just a mass murderer, but an anti-hero, too. So that's right. where I, I I'm always feel like I'm not sure we're using the same language to yeah, describe the same things. I don't think we are. I think I, yeah, I think the classic anti-hero um i always go back to to bring it back to paradise lost is um satan in that story because he's he's bringing about the causes of the real hero in the story um while actively opposing any force of good oh that's interesting at least that's my yeah that's my definition yeah. i know yeah definitions of that are yeah huh. very wildly but yeah, I've never, I've never actually heard that particular version of. That's interesting, though. Yeah. Um, so, what are some that you've heard? I mean, I not, again, I don't know if if I really know the definitions are using because they'll just bring up a character, you right. know. Yeah, Deadpool is a big one, I think. Deadpool. Yep, that's a perfect example. But he's just a yeah. hero, right? He's just a. He's not doing anything really bad well that's that's people how would, i would define it yeah yeah people wouldn't like him if he did if he actually did bad things yeah so it's funny you mentioned that because that's how i i would consider him just a hero uh but then i mean that you do have sort of like the superman like he's a hero but he's not like deadpool can you really call them the same thing i don't know you know yeah i don't know his, I mean, Superman may be an anti-hero in the true sense. Um, people just don't realize it because he's working for the government. And does he even realize the impact of these things he's doing? I don't know. I'm going overboard with it. No. I, yeah, I think in, in some in some stories, for sure. Like he's right, betrayed. He's, in, as a Boy yeah. Scout. Yeah. He's yeah. like... Yeah, I mean, obviously Miller's, you know, Dark Knight Returns, <laughs> like that cast Superman as a, as, yes. a as, as that, like, unwittingly doing right. things. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I guess, yeah, that, I think that's probably where I'm getting that, too, because I'm, yeah, I'm, I, I really like that story. But yeah, he's more of an anti-hero in that story. And that would be, I guess, that would be like, a, is a tragic hero... I don't yeah. know. I don't know if he's then a tragic hero because he's really he's not trying to bring about bad things. He's just exactly ignorant. Like I think Oedipus Rex is a uh, anti, not an anti-hero. He's a um, tragic hero, right? I would say so. Yeah, he just doesn't realize. And I w I would consider Superman the same in in the Miller stuff for sure. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think we have pretty similar. Like okay. views on that stuff but it's it's again it's surprising when i hear people say stuff I'm like yeah either we're not using the same words or i don't know enough about you know whatever character it is that you're you're putting forth as an anti-hero yeah and i think again I, I love tragedy um and you know the idea of somebody wanting to do good and then just doing terrible is just oh it's yeah. the worst like it yeah yeah, that's it hurts. <laughs> yeah we because uh, i mean i mean we've all been there definitely um, yeah realizing later oh gee i said something that probably tore that person apart or 
Yeah. yeah, that is very poignant. And yeah, it's something that's maybe missing from a lot of more content. I don't watch a lot of horror, but I think that's possible. That's something that's missing from contemporary horror. Um, when we talk about it, is like the tragedy yeah. uh, aspect of it. Yeah, there's a lot of... I, people would call it drama. I call it melodrama, to be completely honest. Because um, mm -hmm. I feel like almost all dr what people call drama is melodrama to me. <laughs> yeah. um, yep. So, you know... Yeah, I'll, I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. But there's, yeah. there's definitely no there's tragedy. Good. Yeah, um, they're not. No, we don't have a we don't have um, a palette for it anymore. I don't think we can't handle it. We yeah. we can't handle truly tragic stories anymore. Um, I don't know. That's a gen. That's a sweeping generalization. Yeah, but I mean, you, you don't see you don't you don't see tragic movies really coming out. No, I think we were talking about. Or, Maybe you never saw the mission or you like the soundtrack. Is that it? I like the it? soundtrack. Yeah, I refuse to watch the movie because I like yeah. the soundtrack too much. But um, yeah, is that I, a tragedy? Yeah, that's a, tra that's a tragic story movie. But man, it just sticks with you way that's more true. than other stuff does. Yeah. Um, and I, I think it just, it just makes you apply that to everything, you know? Um, yeah. So this person didn't see what they were doing or they tried to do good and right. it, it went wrong. Um, but it's really easy to just to take that and apply it to like every aspect of your life. Whereas I think a lot of other things, it doesn't necessarily apply, you know, because mm -hmm. we're all, I guess, trying to do good, right? We all think we're doing good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you, you rarely see that the implications of that could be terrible. Mm -hmm. it's um yeah in that sort of meditating on it the capacity to which a work has uh to which a work can change how you think of things i yes more and more that's been my sort of internal definition of good art is how much i think about it later yep i i totally agree if it sticks with me in any capacity now it's yeah. definitely a, a cut above the rest because I, I mean, so many movies I've seen in the past, I don't know how many years, I haven't even thought of them. Yeah. Like as I'm walking out of the theater, I have, I'm done thinking about them. Yep. <laughs> That's terrible. That's so sad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah. Well, it's just a opiate, right? Yeah. I think a lot of most people maybe treat it that way of they don't expect to be uh stimulated or challenged or even necessarily emotionally moved. That might that could be a unpleasant surprise to a lot of folks. Yeah. They go into a movie like, wait a minute, I was just I was just supposed to be knocked out basically for a couple of hours. You're making me think here? What is this? <laughs> Pretty much. Oh, man. And honestly, some of those movies, the ones that really stick with you that are particularly tragic or whatever, you only need to see them once. Yep. And that's it. I, there are movies that I've seen that I will never, ever watch again because of that. But I'm right. glad I saw them that one time. Yeah. yeah. You don't need to watch The Deer Hunter every year. <laughs> Deer Hunter. So I haven't seen that. I know you've recommended it to me. The one I think of is um, the Russian World War II movie, Come and See. I oh, I've probably... Oh, it'll make you hate Nazis. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's brutal. It's really good. I'll never watch it again, yeah. I don't think, in my life. But I'm really, I'm very glad I, I'm very glad I saw it. Yeah. It's um, just really, really solid. I think I'm done with this one. Nice. Yeah, I see what you mean. That's got more of a Carlsbad Cavern sort of um, stalagmite yeah. thing going on. That's pretty was, cool. Thanks. It was pretty loose drawing, but I think I managed to keep the the planes, you know, the, the lights. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could yeah. definitely put in more grays. There's no doubt about it. I could knock this back a little bit by putting more grace, but I mean, these, these are still just studies. I don't need to like, yeah. I don't need to go out of all of them. I think that one feels the most like a 
piece of background art. Hmm. Interesting. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe it's because the values are a little more um, uniform. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah. It's, it's very... There's a lot of gray in that. I mean, there's not much in this. Mm -hmm. I mean, those are, that really pops the, the stuff, the, yeah. the planes forward. But Yeah, that is, that is beautiful, though. I've... Thank you. So did, you, did your studying include a lot of, like, those specific cave structures? Because it sounded like it was more a lot of, um, like, strata and things but did you do some stalagmites and stalactites i just googled cave rocks and then okay. and that's it and if i found one that was big enough and had enough information i did a drawing of it so i, w I was not particular because i also didn't want to if i'm going to do studies i want to make sure i get a like a broad selection of them right. so if i need to do a stalag is it mite or tight i always get them confused Ground when it's on the ground, it's stalagmite, and when it's on the ceiling, it's stalactite. Stala that's, oh. that's my mnemonic for it. Okay, the G, the G and the C. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I wanted a broad, a broad base to pull from if I need, if I get in a, if I get in a pinch or a pickle. Mm -hmm. Oh man. Handy, handy to have. <clears throat> Sometimes it's like just studying these things makes it an option in your brain. Like, oh, exactly. they, could, they could be in a cave. Yep. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, no doubt. Alrighty. I'm trying to think if I should um, ink another one. I'm about done here, but yeah. um, feel I'm, free to... I think I'm, I'm probably pretty down. It's three. three, 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 three. Um, Alright, cool. Yeah, well, this was fun. Yeah, this is what, awesome. Uh, is this a splash page? What I didn't even ask what, what you were drawing and why. Uh, this is just a bigger drawing of a dragon that I had, and I figured I'd throw a background behind him. I don't know. Um... Oh, oh, nice. Oh, there's a better view. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I don't know. It, I don't know it, what we'll do with it. You can definitely feel uh, like the space, like the back, like the ground looks oh. like it's very far away, which is cool. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I'll, I mean, I'll definitely ink it. Maybe it'll be a giveaway piece or something. But oh, that'd be fun. What we do with it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me on. So yeah. this was a lot of fun. I... Yeah, this is always fun. I'm I'm gonna try to do more again. Maybe next time it's trees, but <laughs> awesome. Yeah, <laughs> or or, may, or something fun. I don't know. I'll have something ready to actually study prepared for that. Um, because that would, if so, you want to continue? This is like almost like a workshop sort of. I you're think practicing so. Practicing something. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. And yeah. Like whatever you're, whatever you're practicing at that moment, don't feel like you need to find something, but I might just, yep. if I'm doing like studies for a uh, Christmas carol or something, mm -hmm. this is a good time to just kind of bounce things out. And, I like you know. that. That's great. Yeah. All right. Cool. If he, anybody was in chat, thank you very much. Appreciate it. And uh, I'll talk so to everybody later. Thanks, Nate. All right. See you around. Bye. Bye.